The reckoning begins after the crisis that left millions of Texas in the dark and cold. They did the equivalent of slamming on brakes while driving on ice and it led to a collision. Lawmakers launched hearings to demand answers. Who's at fault? I don't want to hear about systems. I want to hear who's at fault. We look at the push to move beyond finger pointing towards solutions at the Capitol. Plus, new hope for families with loved ones missing in Texas. Our investigation looks into legislation that could help the public solve more cases online. Hello and thank you for joining us for this special edition of State of Texas. I'm Josh Hinkle and today I'm joining you from outside the state capitol where this week state lawmakers held hearings focused on getting answers about the breakdown of the state's power grid. A lot of attention has been on the Electric Reliability Council of Texas, or ERCOT, which manages the state's grid. During a meeting Wednesday, ERCOT's leaders defended its response to the crisis. The CEO said the power outages put in place saved the state from a more devastating blackout. But the board also admitted the need for improvements. Before the specially called meeting, five ERCOT board members resigned. Those resignations included the board chair and vice chair. All five of those members live outside of Texas. A sixth board member resigned on Thursday, and another person withdrew his application to fill an open seat on the board. Governor Greg Abbott said he would make the restructuring and the investigation into ERCOT his top legislative priorities. Many of you are angry, and you have a right to be. I'm angry too. This legislative session will not end until we fix these problems. When hearings started here Thursday at the Capitol, a lot of the focus was on ERCOT. But testimony in both the House and Senate started to spread the blame around from power providers to regulators to elected officials. We learned the governor and others were notified by at least one energy provider of potential problems ahead of the storm. When we didn't quite see the urgency, we said, I said, we need to get out and talk to elected officials and also the regulators. And, and that would have been as of the 10th of February, Wednesday? Yeah, that started on the 10th and probably it was, it, it probably was 10th and 11th. Mr. Morgan, just to the extent that you know, do you know who specifically at the governor's office uh, Vistra communicated uh, before the storm? Yes, uh, uh, it was, uh, did, it was, it was uh, uh, Louise signed. Okay, and then same question as to the PUC. Uh, all the commissioners. Some Texas Democrats have said the commissioners on the Public Utility Commission, or PUC, should be the focus of calls for accountability. The commission oversees ERCOT. Its members are appointed by the governor, but as our politics reporter John Engel found out, the governor is doubling down on saying ERCOT deserves the blame. I was worried about all of us. <laughs> Four days, no power. I just thank God we all survived. Freezing cold nights. And my daughters, they worried about me. 74-year-old Florence Moreno didn't know how last week would end. Thank the good Lord. That's all I can say. It was a big blessing because I was scared. Her story, unfortunately, so common as millions in Texas lived without power, many for several days last week. Governor Greg Abbott doubled down on why he says the Electric Reliability Council of Texas deserves the blame. They did the equivalent of slamming on brakes while driving on ice, and it led to a collision. Energy providers testified during an emergency hearing that ERCOT didn't sound alarms about the storm soon enough, and the entire system's structure may no longer be sustainable. I was a big proponent of this market, and my faith has been shaken. Dallas Democrat Rafael Anchia says the Public Utility Commission of Texas should be the focus instead. They oversee ERCOT and have enforcement authority over the energy sector, but have escaped blame from the governor since the storm. They're not elected. Right? They're not answerable to even the House. I mean, they, they, they have the advice and consent of the Senate. That's the governor's hand team to regulate this market. The investigation will continue, but today, Florence Moreno is just happy to be one of the lucky ones. But I got good neighbors and I survived because of my neighbors. I, I thank God for my neighbors. John Engel joins us now. We mentioned how lawmakers have put a lot of the focus on the Public Utility Commission. We know the PUC chair testified. Uh, how did that go for her?
Yeah, Governor Abbott has tried to keep the focus on ERCOT, but are lawmakers really going in that direction? Now this is just the first round of hearings, there's still a lot left to happen. All right, our team will stay on top of it. Thank you very much, John. Lawmakers have been through this before. We've told you about the hearings after the power outages during the 2011 winter storm. Our West Rappaport spoke to State Comptroller Glenn Hagar about what he thinks needs to happen this time around. You were a lawmaker about a decade ago when we were having these discussions about, you know, weatherization and, and such. Why didn't we take the steps back then to, to uh, do more than we did? Yeah, I think it's a kind of multifaceted, but what I did back in 2011 was require not only weatherization reports, which were being provided to ERCOT, but also to be provided over at the regulator, which is the Public Utility Commission, and also have the Public Utility Commission look at what type of weather Texas is going to have, whether we need to require weatherization in our facility plants. That piece didn't get put into place, and I think this time we need to look at that, but also make sure that it's not a one and done. So in other words, as Texas continues to grow in population, continue to grow in business, continue to have a different mix in our portfolio of energy sources, we need to make sure we reevaluate that every so many years to make sure we're keeping up with the exact economy that we have at that point in time. Hagar gave testimony Monday before the Senate Finance Committee. As the state's top accountant, he had a warning for lawmakers. Hagar told them the power crisis could hurt the state's ability to attract businesses and jobs if they fail to act. Several large manufacturers had to shut down temporarily because of the widespread power problems. Questions for the state's attorney general. Why he says he had to leave the state during the winter storm crisis. A Texas father searched desperately for his missing Marine son for two years. Time and heartache, one state lawmaker says, could have been eased if police here were required to share case details with a system already in place. I'm Arzo Dosen. I'll tell you about the hope new legislation is bringing families with loved ones missing in Texas. Our investigation coming up.